So just a reminder, let's take a look up here and look at the, the, ref, the resources you guys have available to you. Recall if you scroll down to the bottom of that data sheet uh, or our, our spreadsheet, you will find the uh, summary statistics, right? So, so far, uh, looks like you guys did 1,378 surveys, which is cool. Uh, let me first say, when, when you start doing this, you should download a copy of this, right? Again, you can look at the, t the one that's up there now, but it's still a work in progress. But, but when I send you the link, uh, you download it and save a copy, okay? So put it in your folder, put it in your Google Drive, put it wherever you put it, and then when you get ready to do your analyses, make a copy of that original and do your analyses on that copy. So that way if you screw anything up, if you overtype, if you delete, you can always just go right back and get the, the raw, clean, untainted data. Cool? What are you guys gonna do with the data sheet when you first get it? Download it and make a copy. Okay, good, excellent. All right, so um, now here we go. So I've scrolled down to the bottom and so this said that 1,000 or uh, yeah, 1,378 people answered. This is a breakdown of how many a couple people did Kern County for, for whatever reason, and a couple people did San Diego, but most people and a few did Orange County. But most of us, right, are Santa Barbara, Ventura, Los Angeles. And then um, again, this these are the things I'm still cleaning up. For right now, you don't really have any results of those. Um, I have done the Santa Barbara oil spill one, which is the question: uh, did, did people remember? Did people know that 1969 was the time and, and location of that uh, huge oil spill, the largest oil spill in California's history to date, um, uh, marine oil spill, excuse me, uh, in California's history to date. And so uh, in this case, all I did was go up and I coded it. So I said, did they say oil spill or not? And um, so this is 37% uh, of the folks. Okay, so th th this number is the total number of folks that answered that particular, is this big enough or you guys need me to make this bigger? Okay? Okay. So this is the number of people that responded to that question because as you guys know, sometimes they skip the question or whatever. So every, the number of responses is tallied for each individual question. And uh, so a bit over a thousand people answered this question. And uh, this is how many people, the number of folks that responded that essentially oil spill or Santa Barbara oil spill is something, something that would qualify as our answer. And the number down here is the proportion. So in this case, 37% of folks um, did recognize uh, that that was a major, um, that that was the major event that happened on our coast in 1969. And then as we go on again, I've bolded, when you have options, I've bolded the answer that's the most common one, but just to help you visually, that doesn't necessarily mean anything. And so you can scroll around and you can report these summary statistics. That's the first thing you can do. If you said, hey, uh, how many people thought wetlands increased versus decreased? Whatever, you can report those, those numbers. Generally speaking, whenever we're reporting data, we're reporting our, our estimate, or we can call it our central tendency, or our average, or what have you, and then some measure of our error, some measure of the noise. So this, this, in other words, we're getting the signal to noise ratio, right, is what we're looking at here. And now, this is a bit different than most of our data. This is all the folks, sum them all up, and then what proportion said answer option one or answer option two or answer option three, right? So for most of our questions, what's the error? Well, if you, if you scroll over, um, for example, in this question, right, this was, if you've heard of the institution, there's a couple different ways to do this, but in this case, I flagged all the questions that were not true things as red. So the, the, the text in the options are red. So write the correct answer for, uh, have you heard of this made up named institution or this made up named institution or this one? The correct answer is no. The correct answer is to not tick anything, right? So if someone ticked it, that's either an indication that our, they weren't reading our survey, our survey was too long, they internally just misunderstood, right? They, did, they thought W-O-O-A was Noah or something maybe, right? So they, they misunderstood. Or they're intentionally screwing with us is another possibility, right? All that, we don't know, we, we're not partic uh, partitioning that out. We just know that it should be zero. So if we have a look right here, in this case, 3% of the people clicked that one, 5% uh, of the people clicked that one, 3% of the people clicked that one. Generally speaking, what we do is 
either average these, these error estimates or to be really conservative, pick the largest one. So 5% in this case. It's up to you guys how you choose to do it, but you would want to report, hey, for the purpose of our survey, you know, plus or minus 3.5% is, is our error rate. Does that make sense? So that's how you guys can get a measure of error, even though we're just, there's, there's other ways to do that, but that, that, that's the simplest way. Does that make sense? Uh, now, a couple of our questions don't fall into this basic uh, pattern. Uh, one of which is, okay, one of which is this guy right here. Rank the threats. Recall this was the one, two, three, four. So this is an answer of a question. If I'm going to graph this, or if I'm going to show this in tabular form, whatever, you're going to need to, you not, you shouldn't just say pollution ranks as 1.6, right? Because that doesn't make any sense. This is a relative measure. So it ranged from one to four. It can't be any larger than four. It can't be any larger than 1.0. And, uh, and as we suspected, of course, pollution is the, is the closest to one, which is the greatest threat. Um, uh, excess, uh, habitat destruction and fragmentation and excessive collecting were fairly similar to each other in the middle. And then the least of least concern on average are, are non-native exotic plants or non-native exotic organisms. Cool? But to report that, I need to, I need to somehow provide additional stuff. So the typical error bar wouldn't, the typical uh, response error wouldn't work in that question. Does that make sense? And there's a few other questions like that. Okay. So, and we can scroll around and look at our favorite thing. Now, um, you guys are welcome to slice and dice this however you like. So clearly first, maybe you're gonna pick these five questions that are really important to you. And so you're gonna say, hey, this number of people say yes, yeah, this proportion of people say yes, this proportion of people say no, right? But then you can do some additional explorations. So somebody give me an example of one of the additional, uh, I wonder if this explains more of this. What are some of the things you guys, or your groups are talking about that you might like to look at? Men versus women, income, some of the answers to one question and see if that influences the feeling on another question. Do you guys talk about that yet? Okay, who wants to throw me out a question for something they're working on? Seven. Oh, snap. Which one's seven? Seven is, uh, clim is climate change a problem. Okay, cool. So in this case, if I, if I was building this into my, uh, <laughs> by the way, thank you, Todd. Thank you for speaking up. Everybody else is lame. You guys suck. But Todd is great. Okay, there we go. That's right. That's a trigger word or something. Okay, so, so uh, climate change. So you guys want to do that. Awesome. So you could simply report that 87% of the overall population that we sampled feel that climate change is a significant threat we should, we should take seriously, right? Which was the question. Cool. Okay. Now, um, hey, I wonder if, these, uh, if some, something else about our data can help us understand, interpret, explain this stuff. Now, of course, we can just, you could suck this data sheet into any other analytical program you want to. SPSS, which we have on all, on all campus computers, whatever. And you can do some cool analyses. And I would love it if you guys wanted to do that. But we don't all have those programs. We don't all have access to them at home and this and that. So, um, so I want to show you guys a quick and dirty way that you can do some, some sort of uh, brute force way of breaking down the data, even if you only have access to Google Sheets or Google or, uh, or Excel. Cool? So somebody tell me something that you think might, might explain people's support or, or, or lack of support that climate change is a significant thing. Ooh, if they approved of Trump. Okay, so here we go. So can everybody see this? So I'm gonna show you guys how to do this. Everybody, everybody, if you guys are doing other stuff, just look down for a second so I can, you guys can all see this. All right, so here we go. So here's our raw data. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna copy this and I'm gonna do edit, paste special, and I'm gonna say, just paste the values. There's no formula. So this is locked in, okay? So this is locked in now. So this is, this is everyone, or maybe we can call it overall, okay? You guys with me? 
Now, I'm gonna go up, and and so, okay, so right now we're on column AJ, cool. Let's jump over to, let's jump over to the end question, which is column, what is it? Column T, so here it is. Uh, this question was, do you basically support, uh, uh, generally support Donald Trump's uh, actions, or I forget how we phrase it, but how we phrase it. Approve, neutral, disapprove, no opinion. Now, you could, you could slice and dice this every way, but for simplicity, let's just say we want to look at the people that approve of the president versus the people that don't, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this. Now, note this is column TX, okay? So if I scroll up here and just have a look, this person did not approve of, of the president. This person did. This person didn't. This person didn't. This person didn't, etc. Make sense? This is in the order that you guys typed in your data into the database. So I'm going to come up here. I'm going to select this row by clicking not on one of these cells, but by clicking on the, the number that indicates the row, okay? Then I'm gonna go all the way up to the top of our data set. And, um, and in this case, this is Vanessa's data, which I'll delete, you guys don't have, that, that's our practice data. But so here's the top of our data. I'm gonna hold the shift key down first, and then I'm gonna collect, click, <laughs> collect, Sorry, I'm gonna hold the shift key down and then I'm gonna click this row, boom. Now I've selected all the rows between the, the top and the bottom of the selected rows, cool? I'm gonna come up here to data. Now, some of you have older versions of Excel, some of you might be doing this on, on uh, Google Sheets. There's, it looks slightly differently on, on different uh, versions <laughs> of the software or whatever, but it all works the same. So you're gonna go somehow to your data to, function to get to your sort. So I come up here, I hit sort, and now I can just say, I want to sort the data by, right? And I can pick whatever column, okay? I can sort it by column Q. I can sort it by column blah, blah, blah. doesn't matter, yeah? What was our column with, with President Trump's approval rate? TX, right, watch what happens though now. I'm gonna scroll down, oh, our data set is too big. It only goes down to San Francisco. Clearly not a President Trump supporter. Okay, so, but, but oh, that's, oh, that's fine. That's just the, the programmed routine of, of how the program handles it. I can still type in any column. So if it, was, if, if it was QX, I could just click QX like that and I'd be good to go. In our case, I just gotta click that dude, scroll to where it says more columns, and I'm gonna type in the column name. How I do that is type in the letter T and X, because it's column TX, put a colon, and then TX again. I'll say okay, and then magically my column shows up there, okay? And I'm just gonna say, okay. And now the, the program's thinking, 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 but check out what's gonna happen now. If I scroll over to TX, check it out. If I scroll over to TX, now it's all zeros, as far as the eye can see. Zero, 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 right? In this column, zero, 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 zero. And all of a sudden, boom, right here we switched. So now we've, we've essentially ordered, we've sorted all the data. So the first chunk of data are people that did not say they approved of him. The second chunk of data are all the people that said they approved of him, right? Now, the, one of the reasons we have the data set up in this way that you kind of think is maybe strange is so it's easy to do this stuff now. So you don't have to spend all this time uh, from here on out. So for example, let's go up and I'm going to select all the cells that uh, uh, did not approve of him, right? So that's all these cells where TX is the value zero. So I've selected 1152, and I'm gonna to scroll to the top, and I'm gonna come up here, and I'm gonna select that, or actually, it should be, which one's, ah, forget, that's good enough. Okay, so I'm gonna say, um, uh, edit, del or actually, we'll just do clear, clear all. So I've just gone, I've deleted this data. Again, another good reason to have a backup of my data. But now check out what's gonna happen. If I'm gonna jump jam over to question number seven, oops, where are we, question number seven, and scroll to the bottom, check it out. Now it's 70%. Uh, so, so last time, the overall, 86% of the people thought it was a problem. The people that like what President Trump's doing, only 70%, so that's a 16% difference, right? From the overall population. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna note that. Now, I'm gonna do this. Let, 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 let me undo that. I'm gonna undo the clear. 
boom, now the data is back to the way it was. But now I'm going to delete the data that people said he was, that they did like him, he was approved. And then I'm going to clear this. And so now if I go to question seven, so 90%. So if I select this dude, copy, pay special values, Dent. disapprove, right? So this one was um, zero, or sorry, 0.7. This one was 0.19. This one was 0 0.07, I think. Okay? I don't know if that adds up correctly, but that's, that's apparently... Well, you guys get the idea, right? So this is saying that the, the, the difference... So that if you knew, if you knew how people vote... Uh, if you knew how people's impression of the president, that tells you a significant amount. 20%, one-fifth of the population difference in terms of their support for climate change or not. So now if I was writing this question, I could say, I could talk about that. I could, or I could say, even of the folks that approve of President Trump, who is, shall we say, not a believer in climate change, even if, even folks that support him, 70% of those people say that climate change is a significant threat we should deal with. I could, I, and I could do my analysis that way. Or I could say, uh, hey, and again, with this, my error would have changed because every time I change the data, our estimate of the error, so I could have an individual plus or minus, maybe this is plus or minus 4%, maybe this is plus or minus 3%, right? I can build that in. And so without having to go to any fancy statistical program, I can start to do some of this stuff. What, how do men feel about this versus women? How do people older than 20 versus people that are 18, 19, and 20 feel about this issue, right? So you guys can do whatever you want. You can either look at one of these questions, one of the response to questions, or you can look at their basic demographic stuff. Maybe how close people live to the beach or, or anything like that. Does that make sense? So that's, that's, that's up to you guys. You, you of course can do more sophisticated analyses, but that's, that's within everybody's wheelhouse. Everybody has everything they need to do to do that basic simple analysis. Again, I've saved my raw data so I can play around with this. If I accidentally delete too much or I go too far one way, no problem, right? I'll just go back to the raw data, copy that, make another duplicate of that, and keep going. Make sense? So all I've done is taken the data, sorted it by one of the variables, and then because our formula, you know, are across the whole sheet, by just deleting that subset of the data, the formula will automatically update to tell us the, the most recent uh, output of it.